This is Scrintle course video number five, power usage. By now I've made several videos on Scrintle and a lot of the ways that we can utilize it for collaborative knowledge management work, as well as just your general knowledge management work by yourself or with others. And today I'm gonna to get into a few of the ways that you can use this tool as a power user or some of the features that may not be easily apparent, but once you start using them can kind of speed up your workflow a little bit, let you work more efficiently or just squeeze out a little bit more productivity and value out of using the platform. So let's take a look. By now you're probably well enough familiar with the fact that we have cards in Scrintle as the main entity and unit of knowledge. And then the boards allow us to take these cards and put them on them, or in this case, add a card to a board, add that card to several boards. It can exist in several simultaneously. It's not bound to a single one but the actual atomic unit of knowledge is the card. And now wherever that ends up is just part of the context of whatever you're doing upon said board. So how do we easily add cards to boards? Well, there's a couple different ways. One of the which is we can go to this pane over here. We could look at recents or we could look at different cards and we could do things through this way. But if we go back to the actual board, and I can see these cards sitting over here in recent. So if I create a card, I can just say, oh yeah, this was one of the recent ones I was messing with. So I can just grab, drag and drop. And now I've added that card to this board. So that might be convenient for things that you're working on and that you've created recently. Like we could just look at this and load more, load more. But eventually at some point, you're gonna need something that's not in the most recent area. So what we might do then is essentially the, uh, quick switcher, or in this case, uh, it's called spotlight. So I can use the hotkey command shift K on Mac, open up the search and I could say um, something like this. And now I can click and open a random card that's in my, my sphere of knowledge. It's not on this board. It has nothing to do with this board yet, but because I opened this, I can open it, read it, look at it, maybe even open it up in the full view. Once I'm, I'm doing this, I can take a look at this. And then when I decide, yeah, I want this on that board, you can see this little icon here that looks kind of like a map pin on Google Maps. Clicking that will then add this card to the board. So instead of having to drag and drop something, we can search, check it out first before we commit to that decision, and then yes, add it to the board, which then we can do things like actually connecting it to other cards and anything else in your workflow. So we can drag and drop, or we could use the spotlight for search and then open it up, analyze, yeah, do I want this or not? And then drop it onto the board that you're working on. Now, the My Desk view, this is not a board. This is essentially a giant scratch pad. So anything we make on this desk or this scratch pad, sample card, you can treat this as just the world's largest scratch pad where you can just dump out all your ideas. And when you're ready, you can remove it from the desk but it's still gonna be available anywhere. So if you're just trying to drop ideas and work on stuff, and this is just like literally your physical desk, and you could have things on your desk that you wanna handle, and when you're done with them, you could file them away. The same concept exists here, just digitally. So I can work on this card, sample content, and when I deem that this card is ready and I'm done with it, I can remove it from the desk because I don't want clutter on my desk ever. But if I go back to, say, my board, and I want to add that card that I just finished, or any board for that matter, I can search for it, say, yep, that's the one I want, and now it's on this board, just like that. So we can create our content using our desk as a scratch pad or just the initial point where we start fleshing something out. When we're done, we can leave it solely in the collected vault of knowledge that we have, and then when it becomes necessary or applicable, we can add those cards to various boards where it's related to the context of what we're talking about in the board. And necessary just for reiteration, though I did talk about it in my last video, is the advanced ability to search down content, especially when it comes to your collaborative work. So whether we're on the global view of everything in your entire collection of knowledge, or we're on only a specific board, both levels of search work. And what we can do is we can search both based on both date. So I can search based on this date here. And then I could also filter it further by users. If you know it has a user, it's probably just because it's only me here. 
But if I go to a better search and do global, and I could say, hey, I want to see everything from, let's do February 1st to today, apply, and then user. Well, it's only me, so that's why. But we get filtered by dates, we get filtered by users, filtered by tags. You can see there's me. And doing this progressive search will allow you to, even without searching by the name or content of a card, we can filter down to individual tags, who created this thing, and what date it was created on. So already you get very powerful ways of filtering through large swaths of information, but we could also easily type out text such as, and then we've already filtered down based on text. So if, even if you don't even search on te by text, you already have a powerful search behind you to help you filter through whatever you're trying to find, but add in that, that criteria search of say a particular word or phrase or symbol, whatever type of taxonomy you use, and you have a very powerful search functionality both at a global and board level inside of Scrintle. Another potentially useful strategy you could employ would be daily note cards and particularly how you might want to use them. So I created a board just called daily notes where I could create a you know, link train here of just the different days that I might create notes or do something on essentially your daily note. But now going into these, these exact notes here is I could open them up and then I could see on these actual cards scrolling down that any new card I create, I could create backlinks to this particular daily note card. So on this particular note, you could say, this is an idea, I could say date created, and it links to the daily note. So by doing this, you could use these daily notes as a reference of what did you create on that particular day, just by doing a daily overview. Granted, you could also still do the date search and search for those cards that you created on that particular date, but you could also just link it to an individual card and use it that way as well. So there's a different variety of ways that you could utilize this. Uh, especially when you have cards that were created on a particular date and you're collaborating with a lot of people that might get really messy to filter down to what's just you then again you could add the user search but again multiple ways to look at the same type of information and perhaps you might be on a particular card you want to jump down quickly to the daily note card see what else you might have created on that day and without having to engage search there's a variety of reasons why you might want to do a particular way but these are just ideas for different approaches you could take for basically the same outcome. And finally, just as a pro tip, because this platform is accessible, you can export all of your cards, all of your knowledge to a zip file containing markdown documents. So your information is not locked into the platform. You can actually get your content out of this. And because of that, it def Scrintle definitely gets some high marks because by not locking down your information that way, it greatly incre increases the interoperability of your information with other applications and other things that you might have a valid reason for using multiple different tools for whatever work you might be doing on your information. So hopefully these tools and approaches have been helpful for you. And this has been Scrintle course video number five.